absolutely dramatic. I really had not expected that uh, uh, two such extraordinary uh, experiments, uh, I, I didn't think either of them could work. The fact that they agreed with each other uh, really implied they had both worked. To build the real car, they needed real jet engines. Luckily, the RAF had a few they no longer needed. This is actually a hell of a moment for us because, of course, as you know, we've been going two and a half years in computer studies and simulations and so on. And now today, we're actually going to start running the engines, we're going to make a filthy noise, and we're going to see parts of the car work. Going supersonic is not just a question of design. It needs all Richard Noble's wheeler-dealer skills. I believe that the, uh, the government paid something of the order of about one and a half million for each of them. Uh, we paid, well, rather less. <laughs> Yeah, we're just uh, winding back down to 80% ready for the, uh, the slam. Roger that. Coming up. The headset on. Okay, we're up to idle now. Two of these huge jet engines together on the car will give it more power than 1,000 family saloons put together. But there was one great obstacle to overcome. With the two massive engines, thrust would weigh 10 tonnes and need huge metal front wheels. Steering them seemed simply impossible. So wheels and brake designer Glyn Bauscher came up with the car's most extraordinary and controversial feature. I decided that the only sensible thing to do was to steer the rear wheels instead. And it actually solved all the problems. It, it created a set of problems of its own at the back end for steering these wheels. But it solved all the problems with the front wheels. I knew I had to phone up Richard and tell him I'd decided to steer the rear wheels and I was a bit apprehensive as to what he said. Um, I think he mildly swore. <laughs> uh, we did approach various learned professors and I had some extremely hostile uh, reactions to it because they simply said it wouldn't work. Almost in, I'll say in desperation, but as a last resort, we, I, I, I felt that we had to build some kind of a demonstration vehicle and drive it at speed and steer by the rear wheels and not the front. So my brother-in-law and myself built the rear wheel steered Mini uh, based on his old Mini, 30 years old, and we built it such that the wheel plan form of the Mini is a proper scaled version of the full-size jet car. It corners quite well. This is the final revolutionary layout of the wheels. Two widely spaced at the front and two close together at the back but with one slightly in front of the other to squeeze them into the narrow tail of the finished car. Now, at long last, they're in Jordan to test the Thrust SSC supersonic car for real. I designed it uh, purely functionally, although many people have said that uh, um, it looks nice. Uh, one young lady did accuse me of de designing the ultimate um, male sex symbol. But, um, uh, no, it's just uh, literally the shape is to keep it on the ground. That's the, the, the it is designed specifically for stability. We've tried to make this the absolutely perfect project. We did two and a half years of research, and of course, we got very, very good results. The question, of course, in everybody's mind is, are the results going to be credible when we actually get here? Is the full-scale car going to behave as the research model behaved? If it doesn't behave like the research model, what on earth do we do? It's highly dangerous. They'll need weeks of runs to inch their way towards their present target of 600 miles an hour. For their first run, they plan to go a mere 140. North Team SSC request armed parachutes. All stations, SSC is armed. For the video, run 25, looking for 110 mile an hour peak indicated, and then breaking point 25 at to a stop, Max Mill. SSC, you're clear to roll. You are clear to roll. Yeah.
the big question in everyone's mind is will the rear wheel steering work as the speeds go up? Negative. By the time we play with the car, it's going to be too hot. Roger. Even at these low speeds, Noble is worried. He goes to look at the tracks the car has left on the desert. Well, what's actually happened is we aren't going very fast. We're going about 100, 110 miles an hour. And um, you can see that something has happened to the surface here. You can see there's a very slight sort of um, uh, convex bulge there, very, very slight. And it's only a matter of a, an inch or so. And what has happened is the car has come across this and it's taken off from about the front wheels here, taken off from about there, and they've started to land somewhere about here. So it's about a, a sort of, um, there's a, something like a sort of six foot distance where the, where the wheel has flown. And it's not very high, I mean, it's um, maybe, you know, a few millimetres off the deck. That's actually what's happened. And with a car that's rear wheel steer, it depends on its front wheels to actually get um, good lateral grip that way. So if the front wheels aren't, are in the air, then you've lost out on your grip. There are six cameras on board the car to record every aspect of each run. And there's bad news from the camera looking at one of the rear wheels. The bumps on the surface of the desert are making the rear wheels twist. If they reach 600 miles per hour, it could be fatal. We've got a little bit cross because it's happened. Um, Mm, a little bit angry, but that's not a bad thing because we, we want it to work. And if it if it didn't have if we didn't have emotion in it, then it wouldn't be worth doing. When workshop manager Nick Dove examines the rear wheels themselves, things look even worse. We've got a bit of a problem with the steering at the moment. As you say, we've got a bit of wheel play going on like that. Oh my God! Don't it shouldn't do that. be like that. So uh, we've got to investigate. So. Chances are running tomorrow are pretty slim. In fact, chances of running this week could be pretty slim. It can be quite serious, yeah. When you drive your own car, you've probably got some movement in your wheels. Even though your, your, your steering wheel is held stationary, it allows them to move. I think if, if the movement was smaller, I wouldn't be particularly bothered about it, but it's perhaps a bit bigger than I would like. I hope it's a quick and easy job. Don't know. Don't know. It's a bit of a nightmare, really. Is it actually steering? That's real and not noise then? It's not noise. It's real because it's coincident with the bumps. The car has two onboard computers that record every move it makes in extraordinary detail. It's the same place as the videos, isn't it? Using the results, they can try modifications. They come up with a possible solution. However, those events are very, very quick. We fitted uh, steering dampers on both wheels to stop, stop the uh, real quick movement of the wheel when it hits the lumps in the desert. We'll soon find out how to do a, the same run as uh, Monday and look at the video evidence after and to see what, what happened. Do you think you can manage to do the same profile again? What, including all the weaving about? Oh, please, yeah. yeah okay, exactly the yeah. same track. Yeah. Right. We'll, try to, we'll try to find you a piece of desert with the same lumps in as well. Right, yeah. SSC is ready to roll. Roger, SSC, engine start. Roll SSC, North Team chops away. Andy Green tries the modified SSC once again at just 140 miles per hour. Thank you, SSC rolling. Car starts to creep forward. And now both up to 79%. Left is just slow to catch up. In about 30 miles an hour, pushing the power up to 85%. 